the book of Joshua, chapter number um, two, the book of Joshua. Joshua was the man that God put in leadership over the children of Israel when Moses died, transferred it right over to Joshua. And Joshua, the, the man, the same, Jesh, Jeshua, name is Jesus, same as Jesus, uh, uh, Jehovah saves, leads the children of Israel across the river Jordan and into the promised land. When they come in, they had a lot of battles to fight. I was mentioning a minute ago about stuff. A church, a real church fights battles. A real Christian fights battles. I wouldn't go to a church so sorry the devil didn't fight it. Think about that. Well, they said, well, we never have no trouble in our church. You know why? It's twice dead, plucked up by the roots, and the devil don't even go by to check on it. I wouldn't go to a church so sorry the devil didn't fight it. Now, that's why we got our, all the batteries got stole this weekend, and I appreciate the guys working hard to get that restored yesterday, and that hit us a lick, and it's just one thing right after another after another. You know why? The devil hates them buses. The devil hates them bus kids. He hates any church that reaches out. He don't care too much if you bunch of saved people get in here and shout and keep the religion inside these four walls, but he hates it when you get out. Now, this morning, I'm gonna talk about a great story within a great story. Joshua chapter number two. Look at verse number one. And Joshua, the son of Nun, sent out of Shittim two men to spy secretly, saying, Go view the land, even Jericho. And they went and came into an harlot's house named Rahab and lodged there. Look at verse nine. And she said unto the men, I know that the Lord hath given you the land and that your terror is fallen upon us and that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. Look at verse 12. Now therefore I pray you, Swear, these are the men talking to her, or her talking to the men. Swear unto me by the Lord, since I have showed you kindness, that ye will also show kindness unto my father's house and give me a true token, and that ye will save alive my father and my mother and my brethren and my sisters and all that they have and deliver our lives from death. Now look at verse 21. And she said, according unto your words, so be it. And she sent them away and they departed and she bound the scarlet line in the window. Now flip over to chapter six just for a minute to see how the story ends up and see if this really happened, what they had told her. Chapter six and verse number 20. Chapter six and verse 20. So the people shouted when the priest blew with the trumpets and it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet and the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat so that the people went up into the city, every man straight before him and they took the city. Verse 25. And Joshua saved Rahab now, Joshua's a picture of Jesus, remember that. Joshua saved Rahab, the harlot, alive, and her father's household, and all that she hath. And he dwelleth, and she dwelleth in the land in Israel even unto this day, because she hid the messengers which Joshua sent to spy out Jericho. I want to tell you a Bible story this morning and preach. The title of the message is A Crimson Sinner and a Scarlet Thread you'll recognize the big story here this morning. Probably almost every person in here is very familiar with the story of the children of Israel marching around Jericho and God letting the walls fall down so the children of Israel could take that city. Most of you, I'm sure, are well aware of that story. Few people, however, know the story that's within that story that we'll deal with this morning the story of Rahab the harlot and how that she got saved and they saved her uh, and is a picture of mine and your salvation. 
Isaiah 1.18 said, Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Keep that verse in mind while I'm preaching this morning. Now think about this. God had taken the children of Israel out of, out of Egypt. Everybody knows that. You come across there, and as they cross into Jordan, there's these bunch of cities that they have to conquer and, and destroy, really. It was God's judgment on them cities for their wickedness, and it was God giving his children what he called their promised land. So the Lord told them, they said, now look, you're gonna go over here, and the first big city you're gonna run into is Jericho. Jericho was a mighty, mighty city during that time. It was so big and powerful that it had a wall all the way around it, a little smarter than we are nowadays, uh, and, and that, that kept the enemies out, and look, I just throw that in for nothing for you people who don't go to church regular. Uh, uh, they, they had to keep the enemies out and, uh, and protect them from being destroyed. And so uh, they built, they had walls all the way around Jericho, and the Bible said that there was a woman who lived there on the wall named Rahab. And Rahab was a harlot. She was a, a prostitute. She was a woman who had ruined her life and given her life into sin and really, really, really messed it up. Now, the Joshua sent two spies into, this house, into the city, and he, these guys are spies. So they come in, sneak in somehow or another, and they get in there, and they're spying it out. They're gonna go back and tell Joshua how we're gonna take over this city and, and burn it down and kill all the inhabitants, get rid of them diseases and stuff uh, to not infect the children of Israel. So Joshua said, you go over there and spy it out. Somehow or another, they got to meet Rahab and her family, and uh, they said, uh, look, our, our boss man, Joshua, sent us in here. We're fixing to wipe this place out. And they made friends with them somehow or another and brought them into their house and stayed there. While they were there, they made conversation with this lady and, and told her how her and her family could be saved. With that foundation, let me tell you the story of a crimson sinner and a scarlet thread. First of all, we'll notice her degraded condition. This woman had fallen low. There may be somebody here this morning. I have no doubt there is. You've lived a very, very sinful life. You fell into sin. She had a terrible reputation. She was known around town as the harlot. She was known. Nowadays, you can get rich and make me movies for being that way. Back then, it was a shameful thing. And this woman was known around in the houses of ill repute, the red light district, as you would call it nowadays. People would see her walking down the street and they'd say, there's that woman, she's a harlot. You better, you better stay away from her. You better stay away from that person there. She had a terrible reputation. People around town talked about her. There's no telling. She, she was marked. There she is. I heard this and I heard that and I heard she was this and I, somebody told me they saw so-and-so over her house and so-and-so so they saw her pick up somebody. You know, they, there's no telling the talk that went on. She had taken what God had given her and stooped that was pure and virtuous and sold it into the hands of sinful, lustful and vile, wicked, evil men. I don't know how she got in that shape. Maybe, maybe, maybe it's something in her childhood. I don't know. They say that has a lot to do with it. Maybe she didn't have that male figure in her childhood and, and the devil got it. Maybe she was abused when she was young and maybe the, the devil never did. Maybe laid claims on her and as she got older, it messed her up and she got into some kind of life of sin. I don't know what happened, but she was in a deep, deep life of sin. She was horrible and lived that life. Her house was on the wall. Uh, and, and let me tell you something, people, and, and it ain't above nobody in here today of getting into deep sin. Don't ever think it couldn't happen to you. Don't ever think you're too good or too above something. Uh, you've got a sinful nature in you, and that sinful nature is capable of responding to any kind of sin out there in this world. She had fell into deep sin. Her degraded condition. It was awful. But I want to notice secondly this morning her dramatic conversion. This woman had a dramatic 
conversion. Here's the way it went. The spies came in that day. She met them. I don't know how she met them. She might have met them at the store. She might have met them, uh, who knows? Uh, she, might have, she might have been out, uh, she could have propositioned them. I don't know. Uh, if you've been out on the street uh, in a big city, you, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I mean, it happens all every city all the time. And this girl, somehow or another, she met these two spies. And they got to talking to her. She got to thinking maybe, man, they're foreigners. They ain't from around here. I bet they got money. And she befriended them, and they befriended her. And somehow, for some reason, she invited them home to their house. I got my own ideas. I can't prove this, but I about guarantee you, uh, she said, hey, where are you guys from? And they said, uh, we're God's people. We're from, uh, we're from uh, over yonder across the river, and our boss sent us over here, and we're gonna take over this city, and God's given us the land. They didn't, they didn't try to hit on her. They didn't try to get with her and take her out that night, and she knew immediately there's something different about them two guys. Are you listening to me? That's why it's important that every Christian keep the right kind of testimony when you're out in the world because you never know whose life you're gonna influence. Rahab knew these two guys are different. I I ain't met nobody like you. I mean, y'all don't even, you're not even trying to take me out or nothing like that. Nope, we're here to tell you the whole place is gonna get wiped out, honey. And you better get yourself uh, prepared for it because judgment day's coming. So she took them home. She introduced them to her mom and dad. And she said, mom and dad, I I sort of believe these guys. I believe believe they know what they're talking about. So they sat down that night and sat around the living room. There was mama, there was daddy, there was Rahab. There's her brothers and sisters. And they all sat in there and, and she said, uh, she said, uh, I, 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 I know that the Lord has given you the land. She said, I believe you. These guys, they gave me a track out there. And I sat down and I read that and it started bothering me and, and they witnessed to me. And, and uh, she said, is your God the one that dried up the Red Sea? They said, yep, that's him. I've heard about that. Is your God the one that drowned Pharaoh and his army in the Red Sea? They said, that's right. We're, we represent that same God that drowned Pharaoh and his army. And Rahab's brother spoke up and said, yeah, but they told us over in science class that that was really just a sea of reeds and it's only four inches deep. And, and uh, that was, that's what the professor of religion said. And they said, well, uh, I tell you, if it did, it's a bigger miracle than that, how Pharaoh and his whole army could drown four inches of water. And Rahab said, whoo, I knew that was the truth. I knew it was the truth when I heard it. And they said, well, uh, what else? And they said, he drowned up, he drowned them in the sea. He's gonna take over this land. He's gonna wipe Jericho out. He, they're gonna burn this thing with fire. And Rahab said, I believe you. I believe you're telling the truth. Uh, I've showed kindness to you. Uh, what are you gonna do to me? About that time, the phone rang. And for, she got a text. Uh, you have to make it worth these weird people from this day and they can understand it. And, and uh, Rahab got a text and it was from the big, big shot and the sheriff uptown and said, have you seen two men uh, going in, strange men? They're spies. We're gonna kill them. And she said, didn't answer that text for a while like people who don't wanna answer them, you know, uh, for, to keep them lying. And uh, you ever had one of them? And, uh, and she said, uh, she didn't answer, and she said, uh, actually, I did, I have seen them. And uh, he said, uh, well, if you, if you find out where they're at, you better let me know because we're gonna kill them. And she didn't answer that text. And buddy, she, she sat there and they talked a little while and they talked a little while and she, they talked a little while and that woman had a remarkable understanding of the sovereignty of God. You know what she said? She said, I know the Lord hath given you the land. How'd she know that? She wasn't even saved. She was getting there though. She was getting there, and you know what she realized? She realized uh, uh, that she was a sinner. She realized that there was a God, and he was getting ready to pronounce judgment, and she better get her life right real quick. Ladies and gentlemen, can I say something to you this morning? There is still a God in heaven and that God has already pronounced judgment on this world. My advice to you this morning, you better be getting ready to meet him. And Rahab took it seriously. She had a dramatic conversion. Uh, We would say, man, the meanest woman in town got saved. That's what we would say uh, nowadays. She faced the facts. She realized that he's God. He can do anything he wants to. He's going, "My, my, my playing time's up. 
It's time for me to get my heart right. I'm gonna quit fooling around. I want to get saved. I want it, spies. And the spies led her to the Lord right there in the living room floor. And brother, she got right with God. And they said, bless you, honey. Blessed are they that have not have seen and yet have believed. She had confidence in them. They sat and talked and her heart burned within her. Brother, she had never seen God, but she saw God was going to do a miracle in her family. And then her family believed. She said, all I want, she said, if you'll just save me and my family, there's a sure sign you get saved, people. A sure sign you get saved, you immediately get a burden for your mother and your dad and your brothers and your sisters. She said, please save me and my household. Listen, she said, I don't want my family to die. Listen, her main desire is I want my family saved. Listen, if you ask me this morning what my main immediate desire is, I'd say the same thing. Lord, I want my family saved. I want my girls, two of them here. No hope for the other. I won't. She heard me say that just now in Texas. Uh, but it's true. Uh, I, I want my family saved. I want my kids saved. I want my grandkids saved. More than anything in this world, I want my kids and my family saved. More than anything, this I told my girls all their life, uh, people try to say, oh, you need to go here, you need to go here, get you a good paying job. Nothing wrong with getting an education, a good paying job. But I always said, I'd rather them work at a, at a factory eight hours a day and love Jesus Christ and serve him and do right and serve than I had to be in Hollywood and die without God and go to hell when they leave this world. Rahab said, will you save my family? What about my family? What about my daddy? What about my mom? What about my brothers and sisters? Well, here's what we'll do. And they pulled out a scarlet thread. This is a ribbon in my Bible, and I'm sure it was much bigger than this, but it was like that, like a cord, a scarlet thread. Maybe it was like a little rope so long. And they pulled that scarlet thread out, and they said, I'm gonna tell you what we're gonna do. Since you've got right since you hid us from the big shot guys gonna kill us and you give us a place to stay tonight, we're gonna show kindness to you. And they said, you put that scarlet thread in the window and let it hang out. And whenever we come here to tire the city down, when we see that thread, I'm gonna tell all my men, don't destroy the house that's got that thread hanging out the window. Lordy mercy, if you know much Bible, there's a little something way down here starts a turning on the inside. A scarlet thread. It wasn't a blue thread. It wasn't a yellow thread. It wasn't an orange thread. It wasn't a green. It was red like, uh, you know, guess what's red, people? That stuff's going through my veins here this morning. And it's a picture of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, over that home. Just like God told them back there in Egypt. You know what God told them in Egypt? He said, put the blood on the door, put the blood on the door. When God passed over, he wasn't looking for Baptists, he wasn't looking for Methodists, he wasn't looking for Presbyterians, he wasn't looking for Pentecostals, he was looking for blood on the door. Are you hearing me this morning? He's looking for blood on the door. When God passed over Egypt, he wasn't looking for good people or bad people. He wasn't looking for naughty or nice. He was looking for blood on the door. If the blood was on the door, the family was spared. If it wasn't, the family was judged. I say to you this morning, it is still the blood. It is still the blood. When the Lord looks at us this morning, he's looking for one thing, the blood. Oh, the Lord, has the blood been applied? Blood been applied? Has the blood been applied? If it is, buddy, you'll be spared. Amen. Amen. His man came up to me one time. He said, boy, I can't go to heaven. I'm mean as a devil. I said, good. He said, What? I said, you're just the kind I'm looking for. He said, why are you looking for me? I'm mean as a devil. I said, you know, the Lord can help people with mean. You know, the Lord can't help people that thinks they ain't never done nothing wrong. Ain't no hope for somebody like that. He come to save sinners. He come to save sinners. Amen? He come to save sinners. Her dramatic conversion. She sat on down and she said, now look, are you sure? That's all I gotta do, right? I'm gonna hang this scarlet thread out 
the window. That's all I got to do. I'm going to put it down. You're going to make sure you see that. She said, this is serious. She said, is there anything I can do? They said, nothing. They said, if I give a lot of money, will that help? They said, nope. They said, if I treat my neighbor right and I go back and give people money that I've stole from, will that, nope. You get that card hung out that window, honey, and when we come in here, you're going to be saved. Her dramatic conversion. She had a conversion, brother. That old girl got saved, amen. And I want to say thirdly this, this morning, her daring confession. She satisfied God by putting the, the cord in the window. Have you satisfied him? Is the blood on your soul? Has there ever come a time in your life when you trusted the blood of God's son to get you into heaven. I was witness to somebody the other day. We was out on bus route, and I, was, I forgot where I was at. And we was talking to him, and I was trying to explain to this guy how to be saved. And I said, look, you see me lean? I'm leaning up against the car like this. I said, you see me lean up against this car? I'm trusting that car. I'm trusting it to hold me up. I'm trusting this to hold me up. That's what I do with my soul to Jesus' blood. My soul this morning is laying, trusting the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm telling you something, brother. That's your ticket in, people. That's your ticket in. Are you sitting here this morning and you say, I just really wish I knew I was saved and I doubt it all the time and I wonder, am I going to heaven? Am I going to hell? I don't know. Half the time, I don't know if I'm really saved. i tell you what you need to do. Don't go by feelings. Don't go by religious experience. You just come up here and get down on your knees and say, I am trusting the blood of Jesus Christ, God's son, to take my sins away. And that's it. That's it. They ain't nobody got saved any other way. That's the only way a person can be saved. He, she had a daring confession. He, do you have what it takes this morning? She did. Her, her life changed, brother. She changed immediately. Now, it was about a, a week, probably two weeks, before they actually destroyed the city. So that means Rahab and her family knew this for a good week and a half, minimum, before the walls fell down. I'll guarantee you, she, they went to sleep that night and she told her mama, she said, I'm going Monday morning and get me a job. And they said, you're gonna get a real job? You've got two or three on the side now. She said, nope, I'm quitting. I quit. I'm gonna get me a job. I don't care if it's minimum wage. This city is doomed. This thing's gonna be destroyed. And I want to be right when them guys come in here. So I'm going to get me a job, make me an honest living, put in my application. I'm going to church Sunday morning too. And I said, <laughs> something did happen to you, didn't it? And that time, that month, Sunday morning, she got up, she went in there on Saturday night and opened up her closet and she said, I can't find nothing to wear. I said, everything in there was that short. Don't, don't everybody bow your head and pray it. <laughs> and they said, well, it never bothered you before to go out dressed like that. And she said, I know, but now for some reason I just, I just don't feel comfortable going out dressed like that. See, that's what happens to you when you get right with God. You don't stay in Hollywood and get naked with people and claim that's my job. She thought, Lord, half the stuff she had in there wouldn't make a, 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 a sparrow a pair of jogging shorts. She had blue jeans in there so tight. If she had a, a, a nickel in her back pocket, they could tell if it was heads or tails. She threw them away. She had hot pants in there, in the trash. Short shorts, in the trash. Mini skirts, in the trash. You say, how do you know that? Because I can read Hebrew. No, I don't, I don't know that for a fact. But I guarantee you one thing, her life changed. I guarantee you, brother, she didn't go out whoring around that next weekend. She knew the city was gonna be, listen, when you get the fear of God in you and you know God's gonna judge this world and you know God, it'll make you wanna change some stuff in your life when you get right with God. Don't tell me you get right with God and don't make no kind of change. That don't save you, but when you get right, 
Something inside says, this ain't right no more. I don't feel right. Listen, I'm, we went to the beach all the time when I got, before I got saved, me and these boys did. And the first time I went back after I got saved, I said, Lord, this place has went to hell. And it wasn't no different. I just couldn't see it. You can't see that till your eyes are open. I thought, good Lord, they see it everywhere you look. I worry about people that don't see no sin and nothing. Something's wrong with you. Something is wrong with you. Her, her daring confession. Lord have mercy, there's, there's guys down there giving out tracts and maybe someone has got the message and started preaching and Rahab was down there with a bunch of street preachers. I'll fly away, oh, playing the tamarind. I mean, she'd done gotten the Holy Ghost. And, I mean, she'd, uh, Rahab, they said, is that Rahab? Lord, her dress is down to there. She used to wear so much makeup, them guys write their initials in it. I never didn't even know what she really looked like. That's her? That's the same woman, and it was her. She had a confession. She said, I know the Lord's gonna destroy the land. My life is gonna be different. I may not have much time, but bless the Lord, from here on in, it's gonna be different. So I want you to notice what happened. Joshua got all the men together. Now we're coming down to the end. He got all his soldiers together. He got the priests together. He said, you get your trumpet. He said, now next week, we're going to march around the city of Jericho. Now, if I want to embarrass you this morning, I would ask you how many times they marched around Jericho and about 80% of y'all would say seven, which you know more than most people, but that ain't right. Somebody tell me how many times they really marched. 13, you got it. 13, once a day for six days and the seventh day, seven. Amazing how people go to church all their life, don't even, don't even read the Bible. One teacher got up one morning, she taught on the walls of Jericho falling down and she said, now, Johnny, who knocked the walls of Jericho down? And Johnny said, he wasn't paying attention. I'm sorry, teacher, I didn't do it. I promise, I did not do it. She threw up her hands in disgust. She said, I cannot believe how ignorant these kids are of the Bible. She went out on the front porch. She said, I don't know, I'm just gonna quit. She told the deacon standing out there, she said, you wouldn't believe it how dumb these kids are. I asked them guys in there who knocked the walls of Jericho down and Johnny said, he didn't do it. And the deacon looked back at her and he said, now sister, he said, now, I know Johnny, he, he's a mean little old kid and I know that, but if he says he didn't do it, I believe him. But anyway, it comes down, it comes down the time knocked walls of Jericho down. So here they went. And let me show you how they did this. Here's all the soldiers. All right, Joshua, go on, want our helmets, want our uh, fatigues, our combat boots, get our swords, get our weapons. He said, no, nah, you don't need them. I thought you said we was going to war. We are. Well, uh, let's take our swords, right? Nope, no weapons. He said, well, how are we going to fight? He said, we ain't going to fight. We're just going to march. And they said, all right, you're God's man. I, tr I believe you. If that's what the Lord told you, let's go. So the trumpet blew. Da -da 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 -da, and the children of Israel, think about this now, out there walking all the way around that city. Might have took them half a day. I don't know. To walk all the way around that city. Don't you know the people in there said, what are them weirdos? Yeah. See, that's a cult. We've heard about these people. They're in some kind of weird religion. Out there marching. What do they think they're going to do? Knock our walls? <laughs> Get out of here. Rahab and her, her mom and her dad was up there looking out the window. She said, oh, mama, we better get ready. Heavy, heavy doesn't hang over this place. We're gonna have to. We're gonna. We're gonna be dead sooner. They are, and I hope they remember. I got the cord hanging out here where they can see it. And they marched all the way around that city. And Rahab was holding her breath like this and saying, "Here it goes, Mama. Here it goes." And nothing happened. And they went walking off back into the wilderness, back to their tents. And I can imagine she thought, "I think the way they said this was gonna happen." They said they was going to come in here and the wall was going to fall down and they was going to save us. Mama, I don't know. And they said, well, honey, you believe them, don't you? She said, yeah, I do, but 
I'm starting to doubt them a little bit. See, that always happens. You always go through periods in your life when you doubt if you're in God's will, if you messed up, if you can ever get right again. You go through stuff like that. Don't pay no attention to it. Feelings are like the weather. It changes every day. So she went to sleep that night and she's really worried. And, my, and uh, Tuesday morning, we'll make it Monday since Old Testament. I start on Sunday. T- Monday morning, somebody said, they're coming again. And I come all the children of Israel started marching around there again. I'm telling you, those people are weird. I went out there and tried to talk to them and they just marked just like this. Joshua said, don't talk, don't make no noise, you just march. March around it, time number two, and they went home. That night Rahab said, well, I don't know, I really don't know, but honest to goodness, I know them guys is right. I know the Lord's done something for me. I know this, and about that time, the next day, which was Tuesday, here they come again. Are you, are you getting this? We'll have to go through every day. Okay. We, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, one time. Can you, by the time Friday night come, them people in Jericho had the biggest party. Lord, they brought, they brought Miley Cyrus in there and, and Justin Timberlake and Lord, they put the music on. They all got drunk and part of them and them crazy <laughs> said they're going to destroy the city. Yeah, right. Woo! They've been marching around here six days and nothing ain't happened. <laughs> Uh, and they all got drunk that night. That means they all sleep late the next day. You know, the devil makes you stay up all night and sleep all day. You know that, right? You know, there's people in here that can't get up in the morning. You got your days and nights mixed up. Unless you have to work third shift, you're listening to the devil. And seventh day come. Early. High fat crowd was asleep with a hangover. And here they come. And the sheriff looked down and said, well, here they are. I ain't paying no attention to them. This is business as usual. They've been doing that all week long. And they marched around. And they said, well, they're about around. Now go home in a minute, sir. And they looked around. And they went around again. And again, that's three. And again, that's four. And again, that's five. You know, they had to really have some faith in their leader and the Lord to do that. They didn't have that no Bible. They didn't have the Bible read. God's man said, let's do it. And they said, we'll do it. You let us over the road. We've seen God use you. We know God's hands on you. You, you. you let us preach there. And buddy, they went and they went and they went. And on the seventh time, they come around there that last time like that. And the Joshua said, blow the trumpets. And they went, da 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 And about that time, he said, Shout! And when he said shout, he, they, uh, some of them said, when the walls fall, I'm gonna shout. He said, nope, you shout now. And they said, well, when God gives the victory, ain't that when you're supposed to shout? He, I don't feel nothing. He said, you don't shout when you feel something. You don't shout when you see something. You shout because he's God and he don't lie and he never makes a mistake. And oh, all the people, grandma threw up her hand and went, Woo! Thank you, Lord. And about that time, uh, uh, one of the young preachers said, Hallelujah! And jumped up and kicked up his heels like that. That baby ain't in there, is it? <laughs> oh, there he is. Out of mystery anyway. And about that time, about that time, here one one running across. He went and took off a rock. And about that time, somebody jumped up over yonder. And one of the priests turned the cartwheel and a backflip. They said, glory to God. And the Lord looked down from heaven and said, amen, boys. And when God says amen from heaven, you better get out of the way because it, it makes an earthquake like you ain't never felt before. And the ground started shaking and them big old walls all the way around the city of Jericho began to fall and they fell. The judgment of God came. And then people got scared and most of them was asleep and it killed them in their sleep. And they said, Joshua, what to do? Go get them, boys. Make sure you save Rahab the harlot her household. So all the soldiers told you, make sure if you can see that, that one house with that scarlet thread hanging out, get that girl and her family and save them. 
So the soldiers come in there, buddy, that time they brought their, brought their swords that day and they were whacking, they were killing animals and you know, a lot of people don't believe that really happened but those, those cities were so infested with idolatry and disease that the Lord had to destroy them. You say, well, that's not my idea of God. You got the wrong God. He did it and he's gonna do it again. Just like he said. And they were to destroy that city and about that time one of them looked and said, Hey, there it is, right there. Don't stop right here. And they opened the door, and there's Rahab crying. She said, I knew it, I knew it. Oh, thank the Lord. Come on, Mama. Come on, Daddy. And they all got out there, and they whisked them away out there and put them in a little chariot out there while the city was burning and while the people were screaming, blood running everywhere. And Rahab and her family got out there, and they got went home with them. And Brother Rahab got in the family, and that brings me to the last point her deified connection. Rahab was actually connected with deity in the family of none other than the Lord Jesus Christ himself. That tells me when God cleans up a sinner, he's just as clean. Don't you ever look down your nose at somebody that's lived a wicked life. Don't you ever think, well, that person might be forgiven, but they can never be as good as us. They can never serve. You know how people are. Some of these self-righteous churches, if you've ever made a mistake, you can't take up the offering. Uh, uh, You can give it, but you can't take it. And uh, you, uh, you know how they are, but brother, Rahab, you know what that tells me? God put Rahab in the direct line of the Lord Jesus Christ. That tells me when God cleans a sinner, she's clean. Just like she had never done it to start. That ought to be good news for some of you in here this morning. Some of you sitting in here this morning saying, well, preacher, I'm saved, but I'll never be able to be like so-and-so because I've just had such a bad past and I've done so many bad things. Can I tell you something this morning? If the Lord's forgive you, if God Almighty has washed them, and when he washed them away, brother, they're gone. You are just as right. You are just as holy. You are just as clean and pure as anybody else in this world. Say amen right there. Hallelujah. So how do you know that? Matthew chapter five, 1 and verse 5 said, Boaz of Ruth, Obed, Jesse, David. Rahab was, I think, the great, great grandmother of David. David. Here's Rahab. She went from a crimson center to end the royal bloodline of the Lord Jesus. That's what the Lord can do for y'all. Listen, don't you let the devil torment you over your past. Don't you let you say, well, since you've done this, you can never be blessed. Since you've done that, you might, you might squeeze him by the skin of your teeth when the heaven time comes, but you know, God will never bless you. God will never, that's a lie of the devil. God don't halfway forgive you. God don't partially forgive you. Brother, when the blood washes your sins away, it's gone. Hallelujah. Thank God it's gone. You say, Brother Danny, God will never hold it against her. That's right. Actually, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 31, God's great hall of fame, the great hall of fame of faith in Hebrews 11. Guess who's in it? You guessed it. There she is. Who would have thunk it? Like mom said. Who would have believed that God would have put that woman who was a professional prostitute in the line, Boaz, Ruth, Obed, Jesse, David. Who thought that? You know, sometimes we got our ideas. Now, the Lord really used so-and-so because they're a, a great person. And now oh, so-and-so there, they ain't worth shooting. You, you better watch having that kind of attitude like that. The Lord will take the most unlikely people that you look down on and think you're better and, and raise them up and use them better than you are. Amen. Amen. He'll do it. I've seen him do it. He did it in the Bible. Look how he done Paul. Look how he done Peter. Look how he done Jonah. Look how he done uh, Moses. I, I, to the, I mean, God specializes in stuff like that. Rahab shows up in the hall of fame in Hebrews, 12, uh, Hebrews 11. Guess who's not in it? Elijah. Elijah is not in the Hall of Fame in Hebrews 11 and Rahab is. Jeremiah, 
is not. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with him, guys. God chose not to include Elijah and put Rahab in. That tells me when the Lord cleans a person's life up, they are just as good and right as anybody else. There she is. And one day, when the Lord comes back and takes us to heaven, we're gonna look around and you're gonna see some bright, sparkling saint of God come down the street of gold and it'll be testimony time and somebody's gonna say, who's that? They say, that's Rahab the harlot. Really? The one in the Bible? That's her. She's gonna give testimony and she'll tell. I wanna sit down and let her tell that whole story one of these days. Wouldn't that be something? She's a trophy of grace. A picture of those that are saved now in the church by the grace of God. Just anybody ain't in that bloodline. But she got in. That's a crimson sinner and a scarlet thread. I still believe there's somebody here today. The devil beat you down to where you really think that God can never bless you or use you again. This message is for you this morning. This message is for all the rest of you to be careful how you judge somebody who's in sin. Be careful. I'm not saying be soft on sin, but just be careful your attitude. It come back to you one of these days. Just remember, that could be me or you if it wasn't for the grace of God. Amen. If somebody here this morning, you say, preacher, can God ever use me? Yes, he can. Can God ever really bless me? Yes, he can. Put that cord out the window. I done it when I was 18 years old. And by the help of God here this morning, I stand amazed at the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's stand by his for prayer, please. Every head bowed and every eyes closed. I've tried my best to tell you this story this morning of a crimson sinner and a scarlet thread. Who is the woman in here this morning? Say, preacher, I've been wicked. I've been mean. Preacher, I've really, really messed up. Can God forgive me? Yes, he can. Yes, he can. Yes, he can, and yes, he will. Get out of your seat. Come down here and let's pray about it. Let's take the Bible and get down on our knees. Who's the man? Who's the man here this morning? Some's come, some of you men come pray with these guys. Who's the man here this morning? And say, Brother Danny, I've been so mean. I've been so mean. Can God forgive me? Can he? You think the Lord could forgive me, Brother Danny? Could he? Could the Lord forgive me? Come on down here and get down on your knees. Amen, amen. Just get down on your knees right now. Let's settle this thing between you and God. Come on, ma'am. Come on, sir. You obey God right now. We do it. We do it. Good news. The good news is God saves sinners. I'm so glad God saves old sinners. He'll save you this morning if you'll come. He'll save you. One of you ladies come pray here, please. Oh, this girl. This little girl. Let God speak to your heart. We do that. Will you do that this morning? We let God speak to you this morning. Amen. We let God work in your heart. Somebody else, come on, come on. We're not gonna sing. We're not gonna sing. We'll just, we'll just wait here just a few minutes. Terry, Terry, just a few seconds in the presence of God. Let's settle this thing this morning. Come on, come on. It ain't gonna get no easier than this morning. If you know you need to get right with God, would you come right now? Come on, come on, right now. Come on, right now, would you come? Father, please do something right now in every heart. I pray, oh God, in Jesus' name, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, please touch this service this morning. Touch this invitation. Holy Ghost of God, do what ought to be done. Save lost souls. Have your way in our lives. And we'll thank you and praise you for what you do. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. God, do something for us here this morning. I pray for that one here this morning who thinks there's no hope. Maybe thinks they've crossed the deadline. Maybe thinks there's no hope for them, that they'll get new hope this morning and leave all that past behind and live their life for you from now on. 
We ask it in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. These are still praying this morning. We'll wait just a few seconds. Amen. 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 Just stay up here with me, right? I'm going to pray for her. this little baby. Is this the first time she's been to church? Oh, that's a begging, ain't it? Turn around there, Eddie. Show it to him. That's your grandbaby. That's little Emery. Isn't that cute? There wouldn't be no hope for a little kid like that if it wasn't for what we have here this morning. The gospel and the Lord. The only hope they got. We're going to pray and dedicate her to the Lord. This family's never been around any kids. <laughs> About 30 of them, ain't it, huh? Yeah, yeah, no, just kidding. About 30, I, 40 at least, kids and grandkids all together. Ain't they? Becky. And, and, and 13 normal, I mean, I mean, the regular, not, okay. ain't none of them normal, but you know what I mean. Amen. Amen. These are still praying over here, but let's pray and dedicate this little girl to the Lord, little Emery. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this precious little baby that you've blessed us with. I pray for little Emery, Lord, that you'd protect her all the days of her life. God, I thank you for her family that believes in you and know you're able to protect her just like you did Rahab. And I pray that the first time she ever hears the gospel, that she'll come to you and be a, a new creature in Christ. Keep her safe till that time comes. Watch over and use her in a great way. We do pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's give her a big hand this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. These still, some still praying over here this morning. I hope you'll leave here this morning knowing that you can or have been made right in the sight of God. Now, before you go, uh, don't forget about the pizza. If somebody would like to become a regular helper with pizza, we do this every Sunday morning, and we lost our regular pizza money giver. So if somebody would like to do that, it's about $100 every Sunday, Some half, part, 20, whatever you want to do. If somebody would like to do that, we got a mob of kids back there, probably close to 100 of them, and we're going to buy pizza for them on the way home. Winds up about a dollar a piece. So uh, let me know about that. And uh, don't forget tonight's service. Come praying. Be here. We got a special message for tonight. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to preach on some stuff tonight that will help you, I believe. So don't miss tonight's service, okay? All right. All hearts clear. We'll be dismissed the word of prayer. My buddy, come on up here. I want you to pray for us. Come here. I want you to dismiss us in prayer. I ain't seen this man in a long time. God bless you. Good to see you, brother. Uh, uh, can you pray? Can you pray? Let's all bow our heads and pray, and uh, he'll, he'll dismiss us in prayer. Go ahead.